So in this sixth chapter, we are now going to make the structure. And this is the metal columns and the roof. So I'm now using one of the tools that's borrowed from the part workbench, which is this shapes creator. And you can create quantity of shapes from any element from other objects. So in this case, we're creating a face from edges. So we're just selecting some edges from the, our base imported DXF file and creating a face from it. And this face is a new object, so the uh, original object has, hasn't been changed. We just created a face on top of it. And I'm not now going to upgrade it, which basically turn the face into a draft wire. Uh, which has the additional capability to be uh, editable. Uh, the face we created before wasn't editable. But since it was made of only straight edges, um, it can become a, a draft wire. We just adjust here the normal direction. Uh, all beam objects have this normal dire direction, which determine uh, their extrusion, their direction. And sometimes the automatic uh, direction is not correct. So we have to fix it by giving it the right uh, extrusion, like we did for the first window, if you remember. So now that it's done, we just gave it the correct height of three meters, and we can just clone it around since it's always the same structure. So we take the two columns and clone them around. When you clone a clone, uh, what you're actually cloning is the base one. So if you make a clone from a cloned object, uh, you will actually be cloning the base object twice. And so you don't create these uh, chains of one clone of one clone of one clone, which could be like become problematic. Uh, all clones are uh, actually referring to the same base object. So that's done. Our columns are there. So now we're going to draw these two roof slabs, a small one here. And here again, since we already have those lines from the DXF file, we can just create a face from them. And that's it. And for the other one, you see what happens is that we don't have a continuous line. We don't have, because this depends on how the DXF was drawn, we don't have this line that that we could just pick uh, for them. So what we're going to do now uh, is place the working plane up there on the right because we already have one face uh, to use and simply draw a rectangle on top of it, which is much simpler than trying to take in fixed things. And our object will be simpler too. So we don't we now have two flat objects that we can just turn into structures. You see that the automatic direction was wrong. It depends really on the direction of the face. So now what we do here uh, is what we give the slab type to these structures. Um, in FreeCAD you have one structural object for everything. Uh, slab, columns, um, everything. Uh, you see that I fixed the normal direction as well. And it should be a little bit more than 15. No. 20 is the right one. So I was saying uh, we have one object for um, columns, beams, and slabs, or any other structural object. 
And it's just a matter of giving them the right IFC type. So when they will be exported to the IFC, they are, they are exported uh, as the right type. Uh, but in FreeCAD itself, they just behave the same way, uh, all of them. So now we are doing this um, kind of profile which happens in that we see in in the elevations. Uh, I am not sure how that works exactly. We should probably look at pictures. Um, there is also this. You see that the the roofs have this inclination uh, to the points where the water is collected. Um, but we won't be doing this now in, in this tutorial. Uh, or maybe I could add a new video at, at the end, we'll see. But uh, at the moment, I'm just going to do something really simple. Um, here I am not sure um, which line I should take. Uh, so, um, looking at the other one. Okay, now we drew two rectangles and we'll just move them from where I drew them to here on top of the first piece we, we, we modeled. So again, we extrude them. We have to fix the normal direction once again. And set the extrusion, which is easy to see here. It's 10 centimeters. It's one small square of my grid. OK, we see that I did one a little bit. I used the wrong rectangle to do this small one. But let's keep it like that for now. It doesn't really matter because probably it's not working like that anyway. Probably there is some more complex profile here to collect the water. And, but I'm not going to do it now. Um, what I'm going to do now is to fillet these um these edges there that you see that in on the elevations they are drawn like with a fillet and for the for the fun we're going just to use the fillet tool from the part workbench and you see this tool can add fillets to some edges of a shape so we select our edges here And we give them the total height is 10, so let's try it with 5. Yes, and this really looks a little bit like our elevations. Although, as we said, probably it's not exactly like that. But later on, we can look at the pictures of the Barcelona Pavilion and see how it works in reality and how this should be, should be modeled. But for now, let's just do it like that just to give a little bit of detail to our... Oops, this wasn't done correctly. Uh, of course, the edges are all 0 0.1. We have to change that to 5. I can't seem to select all of them. All right, that seemed to have worked. Yes. Now what we can do is to add this new shape to the base slab. So it's, it will be actually one element. If I double click any arch object, uh, you see that it has this addition group. And I can add other objects to it. And now it's like one object. Same for the other. Click the addition group, click the object we want to add, and add. And now our fillet object has been added to our slab so we just basically have two slabs objects now which have a complex shape and that's it for this one